Hidden deep within an ancient temple, secluded inside the mysterious remote jungle called Anaheim, California, lies a heavily themed, adventurous, and ambitious dark ride. Indiana Jones Adventure, Temple of the Forbidden Eye, is a long-revered and immersive motion-based dark ride through highly detailed and story-driven scenes. Welcome to Amusement Labs, where we explore the incredible engineering and technology behind your favorite rides. Today, we'll take a look at the engineering that went into the ride system and special effects on Disney's Indiana Jones ride. So sit back, relax, because this is how Indiana Jones Adventure, Temple of the Forbidden Eye works. This video is sponsored by our generous patrons at patreon.com slash amusement labs. Join today for early access and other fun perks through the links below. Slated to open in 1995, Indiana Jones Adventure Temple of the Forbidden Eye would introduce the massive Indiana Jones franchise to the West Coast and was poised to be a revolutionary dark ride that would bring innovative motion control technology into a large immersive adventure through an ancient temple. Beginning in August of 1993, construction of the Ride Shill Building was originally to be integrated into a newly renovated Adventureland. Instead, the Ride Show Building was constructed in the former ER parking lot, for which an old sign can still be found hidden in the queue. To take riders out to the building, a long half-mile tunnel was created with only part of the queue taking place inside the park. When the ride finally opened on March 4th, 1995, it became the instant success that the Walt Disney Company had hoped. Never had a ride put guests in the middle of the action quite like this and car after car returned with amazed riders ready to jump back in line. The Disney company started a process of reinventing itself and, and looking for new directions. Tony Baxter along with 400 Imagineers tirelessly worked on bringing Indiana Jones Adventure Temple of the Forbidden Eye to Disneyland in the early 90s. What resulted brought together their past work and a number of different ride technologies to create the out of control edge of receipt experience we know today. What the team landed on was a dark ride system that not only allowed them to layer track onto multiple levels but combine it with a successful motion based experience. In the end, the team had created what they called an EMV or Enhanced Motion Vehicle. Each of the ride's EMVs comprises of two different systems to create your experience. While it's unknown which manufacturer created the all-wheel drive system of the EMV, the design resembles the work of MTS Systems out of Minnesota. Further, the motion-based system on each EMV is the work of Duran Precision Systems out of Binghamton, New York. One of the models that I'll show you in this video involved a miniaturized version of an on-ride effect. While building this model, a friend pointed out that perhaps I can make a similar scale static vehicle that will go into the model. A good idea, no doubt, but this is amusement labs and we can't just stop at a plain non-functional vehicle. So, after days of designing and printing and many iterations, I present to you a fully detailed mechanical and posable model of the EMV. Now, as we learned, each of the 17 EMVs features a four-wheel drive chassis that navigates the course every few minutes, holding 12 riders. In order to create the rough terrain experience of the ride, the EMV utilizes a Duran Precision Systems SRV 3-degree Freedom Hydraulic Motion Base jointed to the bottom of the platform the riders are seated on. First customer was Walt Disney World and we're very proud of that fact. If you've ever been to Universal Studios or mm -hmm. Walt Disney World, you'll see a motion theater where you sit in a, uh, a large theater where the seats move up and down and you're watching a big screen. Well, that technology was actually invented by Duran Precision right here in Binghamton. While previous motion-based rides at Disney featured six hydraulic actuators in a formation called a Stewart platform, the development team opted to deliver a modified experience with just three actuators. This motion base uses hydraulic fluid that starts in a holding tank held under pressure by a hydraulic accumulator with compressed gas. On direction from the onboard computer, precision valves can move fluid raising and lowering the actuators. Two of these hydraulic actuators are jointed to the front of the rider platform and one is jointed in the back. 
Below the Duran motion based system is a unique chassis frame that contains a number of different mechanisms to help the vehicle with the heavy motion base and riders on board navigate the layout through hills and hairpin turns. The front tires are driven by a steering directional gear assembly moved by a hydraulic motor that also assists in pressurizing the hydraulic fluid on downhill slopes. While the front wheels steer like a normal car, to navigate tight turns, the rear wheels of the vehicle also turn sharply as well. Being built in the early 90s, the wonders of trackless ride vehicles were not really a thing. Instead, through a slot in the road, two wheel assemblies run along a track with a variety of equipment. On board these assemblies are bus bar connectors, also known as collector shoes, that assure a reliable connection to one of six bus bars. Three on the left receive 480 volts of AC three-phase power, while the right three bus bars receive go and no-go signals from the ride control computer along with a common ground. Those lines will help the onboard computers collaborate to know what to do and when. At the bottom of these bogies are a set of proximity sensors that give the vehicle a sense of location along the layout. The bogey ahead of the vehicle is allowed to pivot on a long rod jointed from the bottom of the vehicle. The other bogey trails the vehicle at the end of what's called a lockout actuator that extends during tight turns. Depending on the extension of the lockout actuator, the bogey also has certain travel boundaries that it can move within. If the attached bumper hits one of these boundaries, it means that the vehicle's movements are incorrect compared to what the program requires, and an emergency stop will be triggered. As we see, the bogies will carefully guide the vehicle along the path, adjusting the wheels and the lockout actuator when needed. Meanwhile, the motion base will simulate heavy and rough terrain where needed, along with simulating forces like accelerations and stops by tilting back and forward respectively, plus heaving up and down and tilts side to side. Not only is the ride known for its out of control journey, but also for the fantastic effects that sell the sense of danger along the way. Perhaps the most infamous and most missed effect from the ride is the Chamber of Destiny effect. This massive practical effect was designed to make it appear as though your car was randomly driving through one of three doors towards your gift from Mara. This model that I've made demonstrates precisely how this effect fooled many into believing that the ride contained three different layouts through three different doors. How this effect was pulled off is actually surprisingly simple, yet extremely effective. Pivoting from above the turn, a large rafter structure spans from the pivot point all the way down to the other end of the chamber and is made to slide on a circular track. From the rafters, a wall is suspended on each side to form the confines of the chamber and three decorative archways were fixed to the structure to center with each door. Each visible door, that is. In order to create this illusion of five identical doors were constructed in an arc-like way, but with the way in which riders enter the chamber, the curve is undetectable. With two false doors on each side, the real door to the single chamber sits in the center. This door is the only door that you take each time. Rotate the structure to the left position and riders will see two fake doors under archways 1 and 2, while the real door is under archway 3 on the right. You have chosen wisely. This path leads to timeless youth and beauty. Rotate the structure to the middle position you and the real door the is now under archway mother, 2 with a fake doorway under archways 1 and 3. Finally, if we rotate the structure to the right position, the real door will be under archway 1. You seek the future. I will lift the curtain of time. It is your destiny. While many have claimed that the manufacturer of the effect had long gone out of business, it is more probable that the effect became unreliable due to its cable-driven design and required an unreasonable amount of maintenance and repair costs. The entire structure of the effect would repeat this motion non-stop being pulled by a motor each way using a cable that eventually needed to be replaced, and it's rumored that Disney was actually scammed when trying to order a new cable. Today, the effect is disabled and projectors shine a random animation on the doors, technically scrambling the order. 
As we make our way into the temple, riders pass a garner hole animatronic of Indiana Jones himself, closing the gates of doom formed by an illuminated rotating curtain. As riders entered, they were met with one of the shortest lived effects, the falling rubble effect. An industrial ice maker was located in the ceiling and on cue from a laser out of Mara's eye, a mechanical pick would shatter the brown dyed ice sending rubble like ice falling. Further into the temple to sell the effect of being pulled in by the spirits, a set of powerful fans are pointed through a duct to fan riders with 60 mile per hour winds. As we round a turn, the vehicle stalls in a dark tunnel only for our headlights to flip on to show thousands of bugs scattering on the walls. However, this effect is achieved by using two wide projectors to create the illusion that we are seeing the car's headlights, while in reality, these are projections of bugs on a wall carefully timed to our movements. Next, the car must navigate a collapsing bridge, and the motion base sells its effect by tilting and simulating buckling under the vehicle. One of the most divisive and confusing effects called the rat log, this poorly executed and blurry fog screen projection effect is designed to make you think that rats are scurrying around and landing in your car, but if it weren't for the audio, riders would be rather confused. After passing that very forgettable and confusing effect, we reach the dart room. To convince riders that darts are flying by, the ride uses quick bursts of pressurized air from tubes that run behind the wall to a pneumatic solenoid valve bank in order to trigger them at the right time. Finally, as we near the temple exit, we are met by the iconic boulder scene. Because of the design of the vehicles and the way in which the ride control computer conducts them, the vehicles cannot move in reverse. In reality, the entire tunnel they see is a dynamic structure that actually moves away from the stationary vehicle. This is a very convincing illusion and is also sold by the additional movement of the motion platform. The iconic rolling boulder is pinned on the sides to a discrete arm sled that is moved forward towards riders by use of cables and a winch located just behind the boulder. When the boulder begins to move towards riders, the tunnel structure does as well, which conveys movement. The vehicle accelerates down the hill, narrowly avoiding the boulder. The vehicle makes a tight U-turn and we're met by Indy and the smashed boulder, showing just how much of a close call that was but in reality, we were perfectly safe. The vehicle turns left and now uses a switch track to enter the station as riders can now unload. Altogether, the clever vehicles and effects on the ride are able to deliver a second to none thrilling and immersive experience thanks to meticulous engineering and technology. While the ride through the Temple of the Forbidden Eye has seen changes and upgrades through the years, this is an experience you won't want to miss. I hope you've enjoyed this small dive into how Indiana Jones Adventure Temple of the Forbidden Eye works. Please subscribe, ring the bell, and if you really enjoyed the video, please consider joining my Patreon. Special thanks to all my Patreons, especially Levi Valentine for production support. If you still have any questions, you can ask them below, and let me know what your favorite ride is and I might try to make a video on it. Once again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the parks.